you're listening to Guad Dot Rocks, God the World and Other Things. I'm Kenny Price, your host. Our mission, advancing equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world. This is Season 18, Episode 374, Title, Happy Birthday, Jesus. Subtitle, The Difference Maker in Human History. To be honest, it's hard to say Happy Birthday, Jesus, just right, because we're saying it to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And at the same time, I want it to be celebratory and sounds popping and music playing. But at the same time, it's a very somber time because we're saying this to the God of the universe. The subtitle is The Difference Maker in Human History. Something I'm going to share with you here on the opening may seem a little odd, may seem a little dry, a little sterile. And you may even ask, well, what's this got to do with Christmas? But it has everything to do with Christmas. And the best I can do for our Lord and Savior is to honor Him and His birth and His eternal, infinite deity by telling the truth about Jesus and celebrating Him, the fact that He came in history, the fact that He broke through into our sadness and grief, and He pulled out the wind, He lived the perfect life, died the perfect death, He rose from the grave, and He purchased a place in heaven for you and for me if we'll just say yes to Jesus. But the Arian controversy occurred in the early 300s AD and was one of the earliest and most significant theological disputes in Christianity to that point. While there were theological debates and disagreements before the Arian controversy, it stands out as a crucial turning point that deeply influenced and impacted the development of Christian doctrine. It centered on the nature of Christ and the relationship between Jesus and God the Father. Arius, a presbyter in Alexandria, broadcasted the view that Jesus was a created being and not co-eternal with the Father, challenging the traditional understanding of the Trinity. According to Arianism, there was a time when the Son, that means Jesus, did not exist and that he was a distinct and subordinate being to the Father. This view threatened the traditional Christian understanding of the Holy Trinity, which asserts the co-equality and co-eternality of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Arius' teachings emerged in a complex cultural and theological environment where Hellenistic philosophy, that means philosophy coming out of the Greek culture, theological terminology, concerns for monotheism, church politics, and pastoral considerations all played a role in shaping his perspectives on the nature of Christ. So the Arian controversy was the perfect train wreck between religion, politics, and culture of the early Christian era. It's possible that Arius had the best of intentions with his views about Jesus and how he perceived Jesus in the world, but my friend, in his pursuit for clarity, he threw the Church of Jesus Christ into total disarray. To address the growing theological divisions and maintain unity within the Christian community, the First Council of Nicaea was convened in AD 325 by the Roman Emperor Constantine I. The Nicene Creed formulated during this council, emphatically rejected Arianism and asserted the consubstantiality of the Father and the Son. Now, that's a big word, but it means being of the same substance. The council explicitly affirmed the divinity of Jesus Christ and rejected Arianism. The Nicene Creed states that Jesus is of one being with the Father, emphasizing the essential unity of the Father and the Son within the Godhead. Despite the Nicene Creed formulation, The Arian controversy continued for several decades, with subsequent councils refining and defending the Nicene understanding of the Trinity. The controversy played a significant role in shaping early Christian theology and solidifying the Orthodox Christian doctrine of the Trinity, which remains, of course, a fundamental tenet of mainstream Christianity today. So what does this ancient controversy have to do with Christmas? My friend, it has everything to do with Christmas. To think just a few hundred years into our faith, Christians were beginning to doubt that Jesus was born fully human while at the same time retaining his infinite being as God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. Without Jesus being both, our salvation from hell and eternal punishment are lost. Friend, I'm telling you, what a lesson to learn. There are teachings of the Bible that just are. And I'm not talking about a blind faith. My friend, we know that faith is real. And if we stop and examine the handiwork of God in this world and in our lives and his trustworthiness according to the scripture, it's not a blind faith. But there are some things that just are. On things that are eternal mystery to the human mind, we need to trust in God Almighty 
that he is the one who can enlighten the most wayward human mind and illuminate the person's soul so that the truths of Jesus' miraculous birth, life, death, and resurrection, and at the same time being the infinite God who became flesh, are all real facts and life-transforming, bringing eternal salvation if we'll only believe. My friend, today I celebrate the real birth of Jesus Christ. I have many other podcasts in our show catalog on your podcast provider that deep dive into all the facets of this amazing historical story. Today, on this December 25th, I celebrate these key aspects associated with the birth of Jesus. Number one, the virgin birth. The gospel accounts, particularly in Matthew and Luke, emphasize the virgin birth of Jesus. Mary, a young woman, conceived by the Holy Spirit without a human father, fulfilling the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The second thing, Bethlehem, the fulfillment of prophecy. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, that the Messiah would come from this small town. Number three, the manger, which shows humility and poverty. Jesus was laid in a manger, a feeding trough for animals, emphasizing the humility and simplicity of his birth. Number four, the angelic announcement to shepherds. Angels announced the birth of Jesus to shepherds first in the fields, proclaiming good news of great joy and the arrival of the Savior. You can read for that for yourself in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Number five, the wise men, the magi from the east and the star. Wise men from the east followed a star that led them to Jesus. They brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, symbolizing Jesus' royalty, deity, and sacrificial death. Number six, the flight to Egypt. To escape King Herod's massacre of infants, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus fled to Egypt, fulfilling another prophecy found in Hosea chapter 11, verse 1. Number seven, Simeon and Anna at the temple. Simeon and Anna, devout Jews, recognized Jesus as the Messiah when he was brought to the temple for dedication. You can find that in Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 38. Number eight, the circumcision and naming. On the eighth day, in accordance with Jewish custom, Jesus was circumcised and given the name Jesus. The birth of Jesus is the central event in Christianity in the world, God's incarnation, and the fulfillment of all messianic prophecies. It marks the beginning of the earthly ministry of Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, and the Savior of mankind. My friend, again I say, happy birthday, Jesus. To think that the day is coming that you and I will gather together in heaven if we know Jesus as our Savior. Now, this is just my personal belief, but that we are going to celebrate Jesus' birthday with him in heaven. You see, his birthday was real. It will always exist as a truth from history. And with that, we can celebrate his birthday just like we'll celebrate ours. I know it sounds a little crazy, but I think that's exactly what we're going to do. And you know, it may actually occur at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the big, huge, as my friend from Texas Terry Barry used to say, the throwdown feast where all the food hits the table and man, we're just going to have a great time. But my friend, it may be at that first supper that we get to meet him face to face and tell him happy birthday and sing happy birthday to Jesus. Wouldn't that be cool? Anyway, I'm excited about Christmas. I'm so thankful for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that we have this wonderful time of year to remember him especially for all that he has done for us and all that he does for us and all that he will do for us. And with that, my friend, I bid you peace.